vine dos veces a Cuba nada más y fue sí. las dos veces que vine a, a poner bombas. Yo venía con una idea de lo que era Cuba. Todo un mundo armado, tanques por las calles. Pero no, cuando vine aquí me di cuenta de, 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 de ahí, de, de saliendo del aeropuerto, y dije, bueno, ¿y dónde están los tanques? ¿Y dónde está la gente militarizada y todo eso? Yo casi no tuve relación con, con, con mucha, mucha gente, ¿verdad? porque eh, yo venía muy concentrado en la supuesta misión que venía a, a, a realizar, pero sí tuve que, que, que interrelacionar con, con, con unas familias de, 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 de unos cubanos. Fue una gran impresión que me ve con ellos. Unas personas muy humildes, muy afables. Desgraciadamente yo voy a tener que arrastrar con esta ancla de que yo cometí un acto terrorista o varios actos terroristas. Si yo pudiera pedirles a cada uno perdón, sinceramente lo haría. No es humillante, aunque, aunque parezca humillante, pero yo no, es lo menos que yo creo que podría hacer. Winter refuses to leave Atlanta. It's February 14, 2006, and judges from Atlanta's 11th Circuit Court of Appeals were here for only 30 minutes defense arguments in the controversial case of the Cuban Five. The defendants of five Cuban men who worked to prevent terrorism This is the second case related to Cuba, seen here in less than 10 years. We've had some pretty high profile cases here. Well, you know, we had E.D. Young Gonzalez here too. I have to talk to my supervisor about talking at all, about any media. Any, I can't talk to the media. <laughs> I like to be. <laughs> well, from what I understand, there's, uh, what, Uh, five gentlemen that were supposed to have been uh, accused of uh, uh, some espionage or whatever. I think that's what I'm, I'm understanding. From what I see inside, there were a lot of people in here. Yes. We're going to have a press conference at noon. In the 25 years of the circuit court's existence, the full panel of 12 judges has never ruled in favor of a defendant. Creo que los abogados de defensa han hecho una valoración muy profunda. Estamos muy satisfechos de, del trabajo, de sus argumentos y, y confiamos en que se haga justicia. Simplemente que oyeron el argumento y esperamos una decisión. Gracias. Gracias. We're Mario and Miriam de la Pena. We're parents of one of the pilots that was shot down February 24th, 1996, over international airspace in a brutal attack by Cuban MiGs. The U.S. attorney has already said something, and we'll have, I guess, something official from Miami, but I'm not going to comment. What it means for the people of the United States is, you know, we love due process and fairness more than any other people in the world. And if our law could be so great as to grant our enemies a new trial, it just shows how great we are. And so, the hearing ends that morning of February 14, 2006. One of the longest trials in American jurisprudence, the process enters a new phase of deliberations for an undetermined period of time. For the government. Pardon me? We are, we have to comment. You the attorney for the government? We're not going to comment at this time. Sorry. Thanks. The legal process began in June 1998. 
when Cuban officials, alarmed by a new scale of terrorist actions organized from Miami, called a meeting with the FBI to provide detailed information about violent plots against the island. Barely three months after that meeting in Havana, in the early morning of September 12, 1998, FBI agents arrested Rene Gonzalez, Antonio Guerrero, Ramon Lavagnino, Fernando Gonzalez, and Geraldo Hernandez on the charges of working for the Cuban government. Five other accused persons gave in to the attorney's pressure and negotiated their charges. Even before the trial began, the Miami press unleashed an intense media campaign branding the Cuban Five as spies. For Cubans living on the island, this issue has a different meaning calls for the release of the five touch all realms of national life. In the heart of La Rampa, one of the busiest streets in Havana, we find the law office of Dr. Nuris Pinheiro, who represents the families of the Cuban Five. Hay un momento importantísimo que es cuando ellos el 28 de febrero del año 2003 son trasladados a los lugares de castigo más crueles que existen en las prisiones, que son los llamados huecos. Y se les llama así porque son lugares en que la persona está aislada totalmente y es un requisito indispensable cuando eh, se va a trasladar a un sancionado a este lugar, explicarle las razones por las cuales se está trasladando. Y eh, las autoridades de las prisiones, cuando se dirigían a ellos para darle una explicación, les referían que no tenían argumento. This case was political from the very beginning, with a political purpose. A small political purpose, which was the, the administration catering to the uh, South Florida Cuban exile community so that they could get re-elected or elected. And the larger political purpose is the struggle against the Cuban Revolution. But the two of them go together, hand in hand. I think that um, it's it would be difficult to have uh, any uh, uh, extended contact with any of the five without coming away with uh, respect for them as individuals, uh, their integrity and uh, acting for in, in behalf of what they believe. Because of their institutional role, it had to continue to maintain a hostile position toward the defendants. But I think those who did not have to because of their institutional role uh, did have uh, uh, respect for them and then again the, the, a greater, greater respect for them as the process went on. El 12 de septiembre de 1998, 